What's going on everyone? I'm Matt from Universal Audio, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Opal Morphing Synthesizer. Opal is a versatile hybrid synthesizer with unique morphing features and analog modeled sound that's equally at home as an expressive, playable instrument and a deep sound design tool. Opal's morphing features go far beyond standard wavetable morphing too. You can morph everything from filters to LFOs and more. Plus there are tons of modulation options that give you endless ways to add movement to your patches. But don't worry, you don't have to be a synth expert to use Opal. There are also tons of awesome factory presets you can start making music right away with an intuitive preset browser so you can quickly pull up the sounds you like the most. This is the first video in a three-part series where I'll cover everything you'll need to know to start using Opal in your projects. From tips for getting the most out of presets, all the way to complex modulation and patch creation. Let's start simple by pulling up some presets so you can hear how great Opal sounds, and along the way we'll check out some easy ways to customize these presets and make them your own. Alright, so I have Opal loaded up here in Ableton Live, and the first thing I'm going to do is click default in the top left corner, which is going to open the preset browser. Now this is the same preset browser that's a part of all UADX plugins, and it lets you browse factory and user presets based on tags. Now the tags can be anything from genre, to type, which lets you browse by bass, lead, pad, chords, etc., or description, which has things like bright, dark, clean, dirty, etc. All right, so let's load up a patch here and play back an example so we can hear what Opal sounds like. I'm gonna load up this analog memories patch. <laughs> All right, so that's a cool classic poly saw patch. You notice in the top right corner of Opal, there are these four knobs with different names above them. These are Opal's macros. So these are pre-mapped to important parameters in each patch and they're different for each preset. And they give you a quick and easy way to come in and change the sound of the patch without having to dive into the individual controls in Opal. So I'm gonna play back this example again. I'm gonna play with some of these macros and see what kind of different sounds we can get out of this patch. <laughs> Cool, so with that brightness knob, I was able to roll off some of the brightness of the patch and make it sit a little bit better. And then with that ensembler knob, it sounds like it was adding some chorus to add some nice width and depth to the patch. So just by coming in here and tweaking those knobs, I have a whole range of sounds I can get out of this single preset without having to know what all the other individual controls do. So I really like this patch. I could definitely see myself using it in my projects. So I wanna to add to my favorites so I can quickly find it later. The way I do this in Opal is by hovering over the name of the preset and clicking the star icon that appears. That's gonna to add to my favorites, which I can get back to at any time by clicking in the top right corner of the preset browser. So while we're here, let's pull up another preset now and see what other kind of sounds Opal is capable of. Cool, I really like this patch. It's much darker and moodier and it has some nice movement to it. Now you notice that the four macros all have different names now. That's because they're now mapped to different parameters based on this preset. So I'm gonna play back this example again. I'm gonna play with these macro knobs and see what other kind of sounds we can get out of this preset. So the first knob I adjusted here is called Clarity, which let me open up the sound in a really cool way. And you'll probably notice that Clarity knob looks a little different than the four other macro knobs. That's because it's showing you what the mod wheel is currently mapped to for this patch. Now the second parameter I adjusted here is called Calculator, which let me turn down some of those background blips and bloops that were happening. And the third knob I twisted is called Shape Shift. Now when I turn up that Shape Shift knob, some really cool movement started happening. And you probably noticed some movement happening over here in the Oscillator 1 display as well. This is a visual representation of Opal's oscillator morphing, which lets you change the shape of the oscillators to get different tones and movement. In this case, the movement of oscillator one is being modulated by LFO2, so you can control the speed of that sweep with the LFO2 parameter. All right, so those were two really cool examples of poly patches that are good for chords and pads and that kind of thing. Um, let's pull up a more plucky lead sound. Cool, so that's a nice, plucky, dreamy lead patch. Let's go ahead and play that again. I'm gonna twist these macro knobs and see what other kind of sounds we can get here. So I like what this filter mode parameter is doing. It's opening up the sound in a really cool way. You might've noticed when I move this filter mode knob, it's actually changing the shape of filter two, which you can see down here in the filter display. This is another example of Opal's morphing features, but in this case, it's actually morphing the shape of the filter instead of the oscillator. 
So just like the oscillators, the filters can be morphed from high pass to low pass and everything in between to get some really cool shapes and movement in your sound. We'll take a closer look at that in the next video. For now, let's move on to another patch and see what other kind of sounds Opal is capable of. Nice, that's a really cool punchy bass patch. I really like the sound of that one. So in addition to the macros, there's also a few other quick and easy ways that you can come in here and change the sound of Opal's presets. And one of the most obvious ways to do that is with the cutoff frequency of the filter. So let's play this example again. I'm gonna mess with the cutoff frequency and see what other kind of sounds we can get. Cool, so I like that with the filter a little bit more open. It's letting a little more of the harmonics through. Now I think this patch could sound pretty cool with some distortion on it. So let's take a look at the effects section in Opal. You can open the effects section by clicking the button in the output effects panel over here, which opens the effects page. Now there are two effect slots where you can load a bunch of different effects. You've got classic UA effects like 1176 compressors, as well as delays, modulation, and reverb, which are inspired by the same algorithms as our UAD plugins. So let's load up an overdrive in effects two here. And I'm gonna crank up the amount and see what kind of sound that gives us. Cool, so I like the way that thickens up the sound and adds some hair to it. Now once I load this effect in the FX2 slot, I don't have to have the effects page open to be able to control the amount of that effect. If I'm on any of the other pages, I can also use the FX1 and FX2 knobs down here in the output effects section. So that's where we're gonna leave it for this video. As you can see, Opal has a ton of awesome factory presets that you can call up and start using in your projects right away. And the macros, the filters, and the effects give you some quick and easy ways to shape the sound of those presets to your songs. In the next video, we're gonna walk through the panel section by section and learn what all the main controls do, which will give you some even deeper ways to customize presets and even create your own patches. Make sure you subscribe to the Universal Audio YouTube channel so you don't miss that video or any of the other videos that we have coming your way. I'm Matt from Universal Audio. This is the Opal Morphing Synthesizer, and we'll see you in the next one.